Just briefly in 2016, the Chamonix High School boasted four Suburban One League champions, two District One titles, and one state championship. Tonight, the recipients will be introduced, have a chance to say a few words, they'll be receiving plaques. It's my privilege to introduce to you the Chamonix Superintendent of School, Mr. Joe Jones, who would like to say a few remarks prior to the induction. Mr. Jones. I'm really looking forward tonight to hearing you speak about uh, a little bit of your past and your, your experience here at the Chamonix. When I talk about school, when I talk about schooling today, you'd hear me talk about technology probably. You'd hear me talk about the, the new that we need to introduce to our environment, how schools really need to reinvent themselves. But what I don't talk enough about sometimes, though I know how important it is, is that for schools, and really any, any kind of organization, but particularly for schools, one of the most critical things has nothing to do about to the year 2016 and technology today or anything that's, that's on the horizon. But really, the, one of the most critical things are the traditions that we have, the community that we, we build, and the stories that we tell. And the storytelling is, is so important. Uh, and, and even just in the little bit of time that I was around the crowd, people were coming up to me telling me their stories, what they played, who they coached, just even walking down the hallway to come to this event. I was, I was escorted by two gentlemen telling me he coached, he taught, they coached together, he taught that this young man, the young man now has taught here for 24 years. Um, it, but the story that, that's in our hearts, the story about the Chamonix, is the one I think that uh, many of you are gonna be ready to tell tonight, and I'm excited to hear it. Every athlete needs a great coach. And, uh, but great athletes need an exceptional coach. Traditionally, we start off this presentation with our coaching inductee for, for the year. A great coach is uh, somebody really with tremendous knowledge of the game. They have, they have an intuition to take the unique abilities of every athlete and blend them together to create a, a fantastic, cohesive team. To, uh, to inspire and motivate their athletes to achieve their best. But more importantly, I think a great coach is one that, that is a life teacher. And, and our, our coach inductee for this year, Rachel Clemens, is certainly uh, indicative of that. As I look out here, barely, can see many of, of her former athletes here on, uh, in the house who came from all over to, to honor her tonight. Uh, this year's coach inductee is Rachel Clemens, and in 2012 and in 2013, she led the Neshaminy girls soccer team to a Suburban One League championship. In 2013, she led her team to a 25-0 record en route to a district championship and to a state championship, one of the most thrilling overtime victories that I've ever seen. Growing up and playing sports, I had many coaches, and many of us played lots of sports. And I still remember the coaches that were the most inspiring and influential, you know, to me personally. Um, I always wanted to give, you know, 110% when I was on the field for those coaches. Uh, and growing up, I knew at some point I wanted to be a coach myself. And I always thought I wanted to be that same coach, the one that you wanted to give 110% for. Um, I also wanted to make sure that I set the standards high at the same time that I was fair and honest. Because that was something I always appreciated when um, I was a player. You know, a coach that could be honest with me and also, you know, fair to all of us. And I hope that for any of my players that I coached over the 14 seasons here that I coached, that they can say that about me. Because I always tried to, um, you know, hold those values when I was coaching. They say every great athlete you know, has an even better coach. But I can say that this coach right here has great players. And I will make sure that everyone knows that. Um, but I think, like I said, that bond that we made, you know, the day that they stepped on to Nishani Soccer Field really helped us achieve that perfect season. And one of the things I said to them is that they'll always be my perfect girls, and they really are. Mark Ozerowski 
was, in addition to being a fantastic baseball player, was, was also the player of the year in Pennsylvania in his senior year at soccer. He was named to, in his senior season, he was named an all-Southeastern Pennsylvania, all-state team member in baseball. First team all-league, junior year, first team all-league in his second year. Please welcome to the stage our baseball inductee for the class of 1985, Mark Ozerowski. I know it has been 30 years since this. I will never forget the times that I've spent here playing sports at the Shamley. I'm, tru <clears throat> I'm truly honored. It's always tough. I'm, I'm truly honored to be recognized as one of the best baseball players to ever, ever have played for the Redskins. I would like to thank Coach Lovin for nominating me and the Hall of Fame committee for selecting me this year in the Shamley Sports Hall of Fame. I could never have achieved this very prestigious honor without the help of all my coaches, from Little League to Senior League to Legion to the high school level. level. In particular, the two years I spent with Coach Lovin during my junior and senior year. Thanks, Coach. I can't thank my teammates enough for their support and my opponents enough for always pushing me to be the best player I could be every time I stepped on the field. A special, a special thanks goes out to my brother, Tom, <clears throat> for always being there to help. Whether it was hitting ground balls, playing home run or nothing, pitching batting practice to me, he was always there <clears throat> to help and it challenged me every single day we were together. Ashley Fisher, from the class of 2007, was a Suburban One All-League First Team member in her freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year. She led the team in scoring in her sophomore, junior, and senior years and was the MVP of her senior season. Uh, she continued her playing career at Rutgers University where she played for four years. Please welcome from the class of 2007, Ashley Fisher. Um, I first wanted to start off saying thank you to my parents who were always there. Sorry. <laughs> got me through everything. They got me through a lot of stuff um, throughout my years here. I did play um, my sophomore, my junior, my senior year with Coach Reese. I want to say thank you to him as well as Ms. Clemens um, who was there as well helping us out, always pushing us to be the best that we could be. Uh, we never made it as far as we always hoped to, like Ms. Clemens did, but regardless, we had the best girls and the best seasons that we all could hope for. We always played with 100% determination and heart, and we went out there every game playing like it was our last. Uh, soccer for me is my one and only sport. I've played it since I was four years old. Um, I remember my parents getting into an argument because my mother signed me up for soccer and my dad said, absolutely not. <laughs> she is not playing soccer. And it turns out he ended up being my coach and is still coaching and refing to this day. So <laughs> it turns out he went from football to soccer. And I'm very thankful for that. Odell Jones from the class of 2004. Odell was a Suburban One first team member in his sophomore, junior, and season, senior seasons. He was nominated for the very prestigious McDonald's All-American and was the leading scorer on the Shammy Boys basketball team that went to the state playoffs that year. Please welcome to the stage our boys basketball inductee from the class of 2004, Odell Jones. I was only for, I was at the Shamley for a year. I transferred from Truman High School, and the transition it was it was tough because you know, leaving all your friends, sorry, all your ladies, and everything like that. So you know it was <laughs> it was a difficult transition, but I, mean, I got through it. Like I said, Coach Blair, Mrs. Murphy, everybody in the Shamley accepted me with open arms. So I mean, it was a great feeling. The season we had that year was incredible. I thank my teammates. Oh, man, so hard. Mom, Dad, you guys, we went through a lot. 
bowling, basketball, game to game, home and away, being there every time to support me. I just want to thank you guys and say that I love you. My wife, my kids, my mother-in-law, thank you for your support. Thank you for being there for me. And uh, thank the committee for this unbelievable honor. Like I said, it's still surreal. Can't believe it's happening. But just thank you guys. I appreciate it. This, this female athlete was voted uh, Ms. Chamonix's most outstanding athlete in her high school yearbook, in her senior year. She um, was also a multi-talented athlete, competing in, in soccer um, and basketball, as well as field hockey. She was named to the All-State Soccer Team in 1990-91, but her field hockey honors in 1989 led her team to a Suburban One League Championship to a District 1 finalist spot and a semifinalist at the PIAA state championships. In her senior year, they won the league again. They were third place at districts, but state champions in field hockey. And then continued her athletic and academic career at the University of Pennsylvania, winning two Ivy League titles. Please welcome from the class of 1991, Amy Pine McClendon. My years at Michigan taught me so much. First and foremost, actually, especially playing for Mrs. Murphy's field hockey team. First and foremost, she taught me that teamwork was paramount to success. You need to eat, sleep, and breathe field hockey, and work hard to win. Our practice and hard work paid off because my senior year was the Shamney's 11th consecutive Suburban One League title. We also were the team that was able to give Miss Murphy her 250th win. And as if those accomplishments weren't enough, we were able to battle through a few more wins to win the PIAA state championship. It was truly an amazing year. As I look back, I was too young to appreciate all that we had accomplished that year. But now, I am so appreciative of the opportunities we had. And thankful that I was lucky to have a wonderful coach in this work and a fabulous team to become a part of so that together we could have success, the successes we had. I can't even read my paper anymore. <laughs> The experience of playing field hockey for Ms. Murphy also taught me life lessons. Work hard, and I mean work extremely hard. Practice, and you will succeed. Respect your teammates, and know every player is crucial to win. This holds true in life. With family, with friends, and with work. Miss Murphy instilled that in her players. And for that, I can't, I can't thank her enough. Uh, Billy Bergatino from the class of 1998 was, in, in his senior season, named Mr. Offense and Mr. Redskin, which is the highest honor that the coaches could bestow upon an athlete. It's like the MVP of the team. He was a co-captain of his senior year season. He was named to the Suburban One All-League team in his sophomore and senior season. He was, in his senior season, named to the Bucks County uh, Lions North-South All-Star team. He was the starting quarterback. And he was all everything, every newspaper, first team, all the way through. Uh, he continued his, his football career at the University of Delaware, where he was Rookie of the Year in the East Coast Conference and in his senior season. Uh, team cap. So please welcome one of the greatest athletes I know, Bill Bergantino. Um, I think when people are born, and not to get too deep, but when I think people are born, not everybody uh, gets out of the gate, if you will, with the same benefits. Um, I think the country that you're born into and the family that you're born into um, certainly set the tone for which direction uh, you're, you're going to go down. Um, your mindset, your outlook, and, and maybe some of the things you're equipped with. Um, doesn't mean that not everybody can end up in the same place, but your starting point's a little bit different. And I think from that perspective, I was extremely blessed to be born in this country and certainly born into a family that, although um, they were divorced um, when I was very young, extremely loving and phenomenal. I, I actually, this sounds crazy perhaps, but I might put 
and, and, and I do put, um, going to Neshaminy High School and the school district that you're a part of um, as the third, right behind it. Um, I lived in 10 different houses before the age of 12, uh, spanning five different school districts. And uh, at the age of 12, moved into the Neshaminy School District and went to Carl Sandburg uh, Middle School. And always was athletic, loved sports, loved competition. I want to play you in Parcheesi and beat you. I, I just love sports and competing. Um, and, and athleticism was something that came naturally to me. And uh, as I said, I had a phenomenal, loving um, you know, family. But when I moved in the Shamity School District, my perception of what was possible completely changed. Um, you know, the expectations that somebody can set for themselves, uh, the goals that they may have for themselves, are strictly based upon the reference points that they get visibility to. And until I got in the Shabby School District and met coaches and teachers and people that thought the way that they did, that had the history that they did, that had the passion that they did, I may have been a very different person, and I'd love to have that globe, that magic snow globe to shake and see where it would have ended up. But starting in Sandburg, you know, coaches like Walt Bien that I had for basketball, you know, and uh, Fred Gerst for baseball, and Charlie Schmidt for football, and then coming into Shamity High School and having Dick Bettison and John Chomp for football, and Coach Lovin for baseball, and Bob Guglielmi for track, which I did for one year, um, and Charlie Podlesny for basketball. Those were just the coaches I had. The school district had a million other coaches that coached other sports, had coached the same sports I was in previously, that were teachers. And when I think about what I thought was possible for my life, leaving the Shamity, relative to what it was starting in the Chamonix, two different things. I, I told Ray Kelly, who was the athletic director uh, when I was in high school, um, you know, my family, you know, my grandfather came across on the ship. I mean, he went to Ellis Island at the age of two, and um, nobody in my family had ever gone to college, ever, right? So I never saw a, a college campus. The idea of going to college, and let alone getting a scholarship, you know, beyond my wildest dreams. I was focused on school and academics. My family saw to that. So I wanted to go to college, but the thought that I could aspire and do, I had no reference point. What did it take to get a Division I scholarship? How do you go to college? What do you need to do to prepare to, to succeed in college? And I remember Ray Kelly coming to my homeroom repeatedly, every day almost, it seemed at some point, Coach, uh, or pardon, you know, Mr. Kelly, um, you know, say, here's a letter, you know, it's a form letter, this one, but, you know, at some point he goes, Billy, I think you're going to get a scholarship to the Division I school. <laughs> and I remember looking at him, like, he was crazy. You know, like, and, and then at some point it started clicking, you know, I started. Um, so that was kind of the first awareness that I could get a scholarship. To be up here and to be honored by those coaches, the people, um, and to be a part of the history um, of the school, the way that this bestows upon me, I can't be prouder. I can't thank the committee for, for enabling that to be the case. But I've never been real good at awards, and, and this is the last thought I'm going to close on. I'm not an award guy unless it has an entire team next to me with it in the championship. Um, I, I did track and I threw the javelin, and that was the one time I broke out from a team sport. My athletics, I gravitated to team sports because in life, to me, whether you win or whether you lose, there's nothing like the feeling of being with your teammates when you really have gone after it and left everything that you have on the practice field and on the game field. And whether it's a trophy that you get or whether it's a pat on the back, to look next to you and see those people that have worked so hard, the coaches and the teammates, there's nothing like it. Um, and that's what sports is. Jackie Andriozzi unfortunately couldn't be with us tonight. She had a family emergency, and it was really important for her to be there with her family uh, tonight. But Jackie was the captain of the track and field team in, in both her junior and senior year, state medalist in the 4 by 200 meter relay. We hope to get her back here on stage to share her thoughts, her memories at a time in the future. So our next inductee uh, beyond uh, track and field is in boys soccer. 
Jeff Vaughn from the class of 1982 was a fantastic multi-sport sport athlete, lettered in baseball. He was a first team, all league, all lower bucks team member for three straight years. He competed in soccer uh, again in his collegiate years at Penn State. His fondest memory, which I enjoyed reading, having the opportunity to play for Coach Hef, who taught us the importance of sportsmanship while competing. Jeff's not with us tonight, but accepting on his behalf is his coach, Coach Hal Heffelfinger. This is what former coaches do. They don't go away, they come back and accept the awards for the Hall of Fame for the players. <laughs> I thought it was bad carrying, carrying him on our back, my back when I had him as a player. I didn't think I'd have to do it at this age. Uh, all kidding aside, Jeff was a valuable player for us for three years. There was only one problem. When he played, the team that he played on, there were about nine guys that had to have a ball and you only let out one ball. So uh, we went far. We went to districts every year, and he was probably our highest scorer each year. So on behalf of Jeff, I would like to thank the committee, and I would like to congratulate all the award winners this evening. It's great to see everybody back and accept this award for Jeff Bond. Thank you. Allison Nemeth Wunsch was a member of the, was a graduating a member of the 2003 class. She was a four-year starter at third base for the state championship uh, team in 2003. She was named to the all-state team in 2003. She was the Suburban One, Trentonian, Inquirer, Courier Times, all first teams. And, she, and is the theme that many of our athletes tonight are multi-sport athletes. Allison was also a three-year varsity starting goalie for field hockey. She furthered her education at Princeton University, and, and, and unfortunately, Allison isn't with us here tonight, but accepting on her behalf is her father, Frank I had a wedding in Vermont, and uh, she's very sorry she could not be here tonight. But next year, she'll probably uh, be here with the family and be able to uh, thank everyone personally. So thank you very much. As a member of the class of 2002, Kim Rubin qualified for the state meet, the PIAA state meet, in the 300 meter hurdles and as a member of the 4x400 meter relay. She won four league medals, Suburban One League medals, and three district medals in her time here at Neshaminy. She also held at one point two school records. She was the captain of the 2002 team, all league second team in the hurdles, 4x1, and the Bucks County Courier Times Golden Team. Uh, first team member. She continued her, her track and field career at the University of Delaware and is now a fantastic member of the teaching profession. Please welcome to the stage for the class of 2002, Kimberly Rubin Hammond. Um, I am so thankful that I was a part of the track and field program at Chamonix. Looking back at my experiences, I realized how lucky I was to be at a school with such great coaches, facilities, and all the amazing resources we had at our disposal. Um, I also wanted to thank all of my coaches, Coach Lindner is here, um, my Coach Harnish, and Coach Short. Um, I believe everyone is born with some sort of raw talent, but it takes knowledgeable and especially patient people to recognize and mold that talent. Um, and let's be honest, uh, it takes a very special person to voluntarily spend hours on a bus with 20 plus giggling teenage girls. Um, so for the enduring, non-stop talking and incredible time commitment that they made to our team, I am extremely appreciative. Lastly, and my dad is making me say this, I have to thank my mom and my dad. <laughs> um, uh, it wasn't until recently when I had a child that I understood how my child's success and my happiness were entwined um, and what lengths you want to go to to achieve that success. Um, granted, for me right now, success is not spinning up on me before work in the morning. But for my parents, I can only imagine how it must have felt for them when I won my first race. Our last inductee of the night is uh, in the sport of uh, boys track and field, Eric Bristow, class of 1982. Eric was the individual Lower Bucks County League two-mile champion. And this, 
As a track and field athlete, you have like a range of, of things that you can run in. And it was amazing that, that Eric's range was so wide. He could compete at a very high level in a distance event, at a very high level in a long sprint event. And he did that here at Neshaminy. He was the two mile champion, as I mentioned, Lower Bucks County two mile champion. He was the two mile relay champion. He ran the anchor leg, which is an 880 yard leg. He was probably one of the most prestigious uh, honors is that they ran the mile relay and Eric ran the anchor leg at the Penn Relays and were Penn Relays champions. It's an incredible honor to run at Penn Relays, to make it to the finals, and to be a Penn Relays champion. Uh, something unbelievable. He was all league and all area and cross country as well. And the Greater Philadelphia Track and Field Coaches Association Meet of Champions, which is all levels, all quad A, triple A, double, single A, everybody together. He was the 880 yard uh, open leg champion that year. Uh, Eric went on to attend LaSalle College on a scholarship, ran track and field there. Accepting for Eric tonight in his passing is his loving mother, Joan Bristow. Joan. six foot four inches tall and he had incredibly long legs which was a benefit especially in running cross country he said going uphill was easy coming down not so much and the long legs helped of course when he ran the, the two mile <coughs> championship for the Bucks County uh, excuse me I'm very dry now. I think that Eric ran for the pleasure of running I think he enjoyed running. And I think he ran for his own, his own satisfaction. I think he ran for his teammates from Shanley High School, 